What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Jan Sports. Uh, before we get into this video, if you guys want more recaps, more college football content, updates, news chatter, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell. Also, follow me on social media. Those will be in the link below the description so that you guys can stay up to date of when I will be posting the content. Also, again, follow me on the community tabs on YouTube if you guys are subscribed there. So let's hop Let's hop straight into this thing real quick, guys. Just want to you know quickly talk about three takeaways that I got from watching the LSU spring game. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, the LSU football Tigers put on a show. Um, I think the first and I think the major takeaway, I think everyone could agree, is that the defensive line dominated. The defensive line is going to be the is going to be the key strength for the LSU football Tigers going into next season. You look at guys like Jaquel and Roy who dominated. I think he had like around three sacks, but he was able to dominate. Uh, you saw Jacoby and Guillory make plays. B.G. Ojolari coming out the edge was able to really make plays. Glenn Logan, Neil Farrell. I mean, a lot of those guys and a lot of those guys that were uh, that were the, the kind of the impact players for today were all those players that were in from last year, right? A lot of young players or even some players from that 2019 roster. Um, that had that was more part of the rotation or made you know or made a little bit of an impact. All those guys are going to be playing for the 2021 season. We also saw a little bit of flashes from Mason Smith. We were literally able to see the size of frame. Why a lot of people had him as a highly touted five star recruit. He didn't have a Jack a Sawyer performance, but at 6'5", 316 pounds, Mason Smith is going to get a lot of playing time, especially because this is really early in the process and. We've heard a lot of chatter from his teammates, including from Durante Jones himself, talking about how good Mason Smith has been over has been over the spring. So I think that Mason Smith and a lot of those young and a lot of really those young guys that are going to be coming in uh, during during the summertime, it is it is just going to add a lot more depth to this LSU defensive line. But the defensive line is clearly going to be the strength of this football team going into next year. Uh, I think the second takeaway is the receivers. The receivers were really good. Uh, we learned that Keishon Butte is going to be the number one guy. Now, of course, that's not really that huge of a surprise. I mean, if you look at Keishon Butte and what he was able to do uh, last year um, when Terrence Marshall opted out, Keishon Butte became the guy. He became the man of the offense. Uh, right. You look at you look at that, you know, the 100 yard performance he had against Alabama. You had the 100 yard performance he had against uh, against. I think it wasn't Texas A&M. He had a 100 yard performance against Florida. Then you look at the 300 yard performance he put up against Ole Miss. I mean, Keishon Butte was an absolute dog. And for this game, I mean, he was extremely explosive, knew how to use knew knew how to use uh, the release points. His route tree ability was on fully on display, but just most importantly, the physicality um, when people when when corners were trying to press him again, his route running ability, his explosiveness coming up, you know, really, you know, coming off. I mean, it was it was all phenomenally well. Um, and again, he's a very intelligent player. He understands he understands the coverage concepts that were given to him and he was able to really go out there and execute um, fully to his ability. So there is no question that Keishon Butte is a dog. I wouldn't be shocked at all if he wears number seven, um, which, you know, for those who do not know what number seven is for the LSU tradition, it's mainly kind of the alpha dog, kind of the impact player, um, right? As you know, the superstar kind of the team a little bit there. Um, but yeah, Keishon Butte, there's, there's no doubt. I mean, he, if he gets number seven, um, that's, you know, that's, that wouldn't be, you know, coming in, that wouldn't be any surprise. He is clearly the guy. Um, as far as your number two receiver, it might be Kirkland. Kirkland had a really good performance, and Kirkland was one of those guys that I don't think a lot of people would really kind of expect him to be a dog. Um, as far as being the playing opposite of Keishon Butte, maybe you know towards the fall. Now it is spring, but a lot of people will look at his performance, and he had 13 catches for over 200 receiving yards in this game. But I mean, you know, Trey Palmer. I mean, you look at guys like Trey Palmer, extremely talented. Coy Moore, extremely talented. And then you look at some of the other guys that are going to be coming in during the summer. I mean, yeah, I mean, LSU is, is absolutely stacked and they're loaded at the receiving position. But for a guy like Kirkland, who's one of those guys that I think like what he was like the fifth or sixth receiver on last year on the LSU on the LSU roster or on the death chart, that's extremely impressive for Kirkland to really step up. And again. 
This is just huge promise, right? Huge promise of showing off the depth that LSU really had. So the receiving position is going to be a key strength for the LSU football Tigers going in. I think the third really takeaway is their secondary is really loaded. Their secondary is extremely loaded. Jay Ward was able to kind of continue off what he had last year. Last year was more of a was more of a uh, more of a down year up until like the last three to four games of the year. That's really really you know that's when you saw Jay Ward, you know his his amazing ball skills. Um, pause, but yeah, his his amazing tracking skills when it comes to the ball. Uh, you was able to see the physicality, how he was good in the in run support. You was able to see his size and his physical traits on display. Um, but then you look at Derek Steenley Jr., who again, uh, for what we've heard, he's got like what five interceptions in, during the spring period. And Derek Steenley Jr. kind of showed why, again, why he's going to be the number one guy and why he potentially could be a top 10 pick. Now, it was a very good battle watching him against Kayshawn Butte. That was a very, very good battle. Um, but yeah, you saw Derek Steenley, his his playmaking skills, on you know, pretty much be on display when he caught an interception. That was really, really impressive to see for him. Um, but yeah, you saw Jay Ward was able to make some plays as well. Um, Dwight McLaughlin, a guy that's a former four-star recruit, another you know six-one, two hundred pound corner, another big corner. He was able to make plays. And again, uh, Eli Ricks is wasn't he wasn't playing today. I think he was out due to injury. But Eli Ricks, we all know, is a guy that's going to be playing opposite of Derek Stingley Jr. So again, LSU pretty much just dis dis pretty much displaying the potential, the depth that they have in the secondary, and. Of course, we all know, you know, Coy Raymond, probably the best defensive back coach in the country. We all know he's going to get those guys ready to go for the fall season. So LSU's defense as a whole, I thought really were impressive. Um, I know people will say, well, the quarterbacks played well. And I think the quarterbacks played pretty decent as well. I mean, you know, Miles Brennan, I thought had a pretty decent game. Max Johnson, I felt like showed that he, at, at least right now, Max Johnson looks like he's going to be the starting quarterback. TJ Finley displayed his arm strength, but he still is very, very raw. His footwork was kind of off a little bit. He kept throwing it out a little bit off his back foot. You, you know, you kind of saw he panicked a little bit more. But his arm strength, his size, I mean, there's no question that TJ Finley is the most talented quarterback on the roster. We was able to, we was also able to see Nussmeyer as well, who looks like he's probably the most mobile out of all the quarterbacks, but he was able to have a pretty decent day, even though he threw a couple interceptions as well. Um, but overall wise, again, the defense, I thought shy today. The defense really, really impressed me today. And um, again, you know, going into going into next year, I think it the defense really needs to be the key strength because their defense was awful. It was awful last year. And despite the many mistakes that the offense made last year, the defense, I thought, was the number one reason why they kind of were they kind of had a five and five record. So they need to be better. I think they displayed that off that 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 alpha dog mentality today. Obviously, Durante Jones has done an amazing job so far during the spring, and you know, hopefully, we get to see more of that, or LSU fans get to see more of that. You know, uh, you know, as far as what we get to see during fall camp, during summer, during summer camp, fall camp, whatever you want to call it, and then going in preparing for that UCLA game, we can see that defense finally be on display. But there is no questioning this is a top five roster, if not a top three roster in all of college football. They return a crap ton of starters, and we was able to see some of those guys play today. Um, LSU is again. Uh, I, I thought they were pretty impressive today as far as the talent that was that was being displayed. And uh, again, I can't wait to see what they can do during the fall, during uh, the first game against the UCLA Bruins. So if, again, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button, share the video, subscribe, hit notification bells. Also, follow me on social media. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. That Those links will be right below the link to the description. Again, so you guys can catch more updates for college football news, updates, recruiting chatter, all that stuff. Make sure to follow me um, on those things. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for viewing this video, and I am out. So, Jan716, I'll catch you guys later. Peace.